Hey YouTubers, Mike Boris with the Mike Boris channel. Thank you for watching. Today a friendly project. We're working on a Chevy Malibu and we are going to show you the step-by-step -step process on how to replace the brake pads and rotors. Let's get started. Step one, we are going to insert blocks in the rear portion of the rear tires. Hop inside the vehicle and we are going to set the parking brake. Newer style parking brakes, just the flip of a switch and you will hear the linkage lock. From here, we are going to spend a couple minutes and loosen each of these lug nuts. We're not going to remove them, we are just going to loosen them. From there, we are going to lift the car with a jack and rest it on a jack stand. The reason why we are going to loosen the lug nuts prior to lifting it and resting it on that jack stand is to alleviate this car falling off the jack stand when you're yanking and pulling and trying to loosen those lug nuts. So again, loosen them first, but don't remove them, and then lift the car. And when loosening these lug nuts, it's all about leverage. At this point, I have the vehicle resting on the jack stand below, and now we are going to remove all the lug nuts and the tire. Tire is removed. From here, we grabbed our 14 millimeter socket and ratchet. We have better access to the actual rotor, your caliper, and this is the brace that houses your brake pads. And the 14 millimeter bolt here goes into your actual caliper slide. We are going to remove that, as well as an additional 14 millimeter bolt down at the bottom. At this point, we can pull this caliper off. However, I'm going to grab a block because when I pull this caliper off, the last thing you want is this heavy caliper hanging from this rubber brake line. Do not do that. These rubber brake lines fail from the inside out and in the event that you twist this or bend this in a way, you will damage the inner portion of this brake line, causing brake issues to your system that will give you nightmares, so trust me. Block is in place. Again, this caliper is pretty heavy and it could be stuck on the caliper slide portion. Just give it a little wiggle. And again, as you maneuver this, do your best not to harm that brake line or allow this heavy caliper to hang from it. Support it by a block. What I did next was turn the actual steering wheel to the right. Gave us better access to the two 21 millimeter bolts that secure this brace here. I am going to carefully apply pressure. Now to the top bolt, and once you get them loose, you can grab your smaller ratchet and socket and remove both the upper and lower bolts. At this point, be very careful because you don't want to forget how these actual pads go into the clips and the brace. So carefully pull this off and we will set that aside. From here, we are going to remove this rotor. Next, we wanna direct our attention to this T-bit screw and my parents got this socket wrench set for me for Christmas. This is an awesome Craftsman 42 piece with all the T-bits and in our case, this is a T30, and what we are going to do is loosen this T30 and remove it. From here, your rotor should be loose. You might have to get a rubber mallet and bang on it a little bit. Little rubber mallet. And it should come right off. As you pull this rotor off, be careful with this thread. Do not harm it. All right. Next, let's open the new rotor. There's the new rotor and it is secured by plastic wrap. And inside that plastic wrap is a grease slash oil based product that does not allow that rotor to rust while it's in the box on the shelf at the actual store. So with that said, that is why they sell brake cleaner because 
That product that is on this rotor not allowing it to rust, when you put this rotor on and start driving, the very first couple times you apply brakes, guess what's going to happen? That product is going to heat up and begin to burn off with the heat being generated by the pads, thus causing a very unpleasant odor, which may lead you to think that something has gone terribly wrong with your recent brake repairs. So this is personal preference. We are going to open this up. We are going to use the brake cleaner to clean off all that product to alleviate that odor. And I'm going to grab a paper towel and rub all that product off. Again, we're alleviating that really unpleasant odor the first time you apply your brakes. Once you get this side cleaned, flip it over and do the same on the rear side. Both sides of the rotor are clean. Let's pick it up and insert it on the actual wheel hub assembly. Back of the hub assembly and that little T30 screw we took out, we need to align this rotor properly to allow us to reinsert and secure that T30 screw. Once you get the new rotor on, again, properly align the hole, insert the screw, and do not cross thread that screw into the internal thread on the hub. Also be advised the weight of the rotor will make the rotor actually shift outward on the hub. So just be careful with that. Again, do your best not to cross thread this screw. This point rotor is properly secured we are going to direct our attention to the actual pads and our replacement pads the Duralast Gold and get a real good picture on how these pads go in you'll notice on the rear side of the outer portion of the actual brace near the caliper slide you have prongs here and on this side you do not have any prongs all right youtubers here is the brace and pads as you can see we will open up the box and there's a new pads. So back to the brace. All I'm going to do is carefully remove these pads and I'm going to just press in. That was not too bad. However, the inner pad, that's in really, really bad shape as you can see here. So again, take note of that tab. Set that aside. Here's your internal clips. Some brakes come with new clips, some don't, and in our case, it does not look like they came with new clips. So, we're just going to put the new pads on, okay? Again, there's that tab. I'm going to insert it properly. First pad's in, and I'm going to insert the second pad. Now this pad, does not have that tab on it. That's important. Do not put both the brake pads with tabs on one side. You do not want to do that. Again, I'm going to come in from the inner portion, align the two open teeth prong areas, and insert it. From here, the pads are in. Let's head back to the hub, back of the hub assembly and rotor. And again, the caliper slides. On the back side, you have the face portions that will actually secure themselves inside so align this properly on the rotor just be careful it's a little heavy and once you get this properly aligned secure those bolts Once you get those 21 millimeter bolts secured and that brace secure, that is what those new pads look like on that brand new rotor. Now, pop the hood. Come all the way to your brake reservoir. Take that cap off. I'll show you why. Set that in a safe location. We're going to come back down. What we need to do is compress that piston right there because once we took that caliper off the old brake rotor that caliper began to extend outward and so what i did again be very very careful with this actual rubber brake line i positioned the brake caliper on the rotor applied my seat clamp and i'm going to tighten it and as i tighten it it will compress that piston and as i tighten the seat clamp and compress that piston that fluid is traveling back into the system and that's why we opened up that cap on the reservoir to allow that pressure not to be trapped 
Again, be very careful. See this little rubber boot here? Make sure your seat clamp is not touching that rubber boot. If you damage that rubber boot, you'll allow moisture into the actual piston and your piston will fail over time. Once you compress this piston all the way, we are going to take the caliper and put it on the actual rotor. From here, Let's realign those 14 millimeter bolts and secure them. Get a good feel, hand tighten them first. Do not cross thread these. At this point, both the upper and lower 14 millimeter bolts are secured into that slide portion. And quick tip, you'll notice this portion here. In the event that you are just trying to tighten this, this inner portion of the slide is going to rotate. So grab a wrench and hold that inner nut in place. Once you're done, you should be able to shift the caliper slightly forward and backward. Notice I got two different gloves. The other pink glove gave way and I'm out of pink gloves. From here, I'll turn the wheel, align the hub properly inside the actual wheel well and re-secure the tire. Making progress, YouTubers, at this point, I've got the tire on and the lug nuts secured. I've got the jack stand removed and the jack pulled out. The car is resting on the ground. From here, we're going to follow the exact same steps and do the driver's side. However, I won't bore you with that. However, what I will say is once you complete both sides, do not forget to put that brake reservoir cap back on. At this point, YouTubers, the driver's side pads and rotors are replaced. Everything is re-secured. And again, do not forget to re-secure the cap to the brake reservoir. From here, a couple things. Number one, I'm going to take it for a test drive. And number two, when you actually apply the first applications to your brake pedal inside your car, you will notice your brakes are a little loose. And that is because the new pads have not properly seated themselves to the new rotor. So do anticipate loose brakes for the first couple applications before you even get over 10 miles an hour. Just do yourself a favor and apply the brakes at least five times. All right, YouTubers, we are back from our test drive and all went well hope the video helped do us a favor below the video you will see that thumbs up icon click on that like the video subscribe to the channel definitely go to your settings turn on your youtube notification bell once you do that every video that we upload you will be notified you will be able to stay up to date with us and that will be awesome